Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. It's a beautiful morning in Alberta, the perfect time to have a little bit of consensus cake with your tea or coffee, right? <laughs> so today I'd like to have a look at the uh, rerun of Oreskes consensus study. Now Nomi Oreskes did a survey of abstracts of peer-reviewed papers in 2004, which she surveyed for specific terms related to climate change and assumed that because they existed in the abstract that that meant the authors were in a full agreement with the notion of anthropogenic global climate change. So a few months after her study was published, uh, Dr. Benny Pizer did a rerun of it and he came up with very different results. Now if you recall, um, Oreskes' survey was also cited in Al Gore's movie An Inconvenient Truth. And uh, he even went so far as to say, because of the parameters involved, that it looked to him like 100% of scientists agreed on anthropogenic global warming and climate change. But that's not what Dr. Pizer found. So let's have a look at his findings. I've got an ordinary angel food cake here that I got at the store. I've just sliced it into representative portions to give us a sense of who uh, agreed with what. I see I have a little fly here interested in eating with me. So he surveyed about 1,117 uh, papers and he read them all. So by reading through them all, he understood whether or not the author was just referring to climate change as a term, because climate has changed for the past 4.5 billion years, or whether they were specifically or implicitly referring to human-caused climate change. So. There were 13 papers that explicitly endorsed the consensus view. There were 322 that implicitly endorsed, but they were focused on impacts. There were 89 that looked at mitigation proposals, but they didn't really talk about whether or not climate change was human caused. That wasn't the issue. There were 67 that discussed methods of assessing climate change and human impacts. There were 87 that looked at paleoclimate analysis. So paleoclimate analysis relates to natural variability, not to human causation. There were um, 34 <laughs> Oh, maybe I've mixed these up. There were 34 that actually rejected or doubted the consensus view. And there were 44 that looked at natural factors. And there were 470 papers, 470 papers that were unrelated to climate change, but did include the words global climate change. So that doesn't really look like consensus to me does it? So you have to understand that when people talk about consensus, what do they mean? Are they talking about the fact that people agree that humans affect climate change? Because if so, we're in that 97%. And that would probably be most of the scientists who would agree that, yes, humans affect climate change, but are we the main or the sole drivers of climate change? Is carbon dioxide the only factor that drives climate change? You can see here that 470 papers were addressing global climate change, but it was unrelated to human causation. So you can see here that there were um, several that rejected or doubted the consensus, many that looked at natural factors, and uh, many that studied the paleoclimate analysis. So I think that we have to stop trying to do science by consensus because science is done by evidence. Science is not a democracy. You don't vote on science. You actually have to show the evidence. And so far the evidence is that humans contribute to climate change but we're not the sole driver of climate change. And also, the evidence shows that carbon dioxide 
is not the knob that can fine-tune climate change. So all these expensive mitigation programs like putting up wind and solar are not going to do anything to stop climate change. And it's time that we open up the discussion about climate change and about the costs of these mitigation proposals. It's time that we had open civil debate on climate and energy policies. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling. Bon appétit.